Hello, welcome to Brain Spill, the lazy show on the internet. My name is Tank, and today we're talking about Castaway. Now, I was going to put a funny pun in here of me screaming Wilson's name, although I don't really want to get a noise complaint, so uh, yeah, you're probably just going to have to have the clip instead. Wilson! Movies such as Castaway have truly cemented themselves into movie history. There are certainly a variety of reasons as to why this is, which range from the acting, the cinematography, the advertising, but the thing I think which is most impressive, in particular about this film, is the writing. And although people can appreciate a film that's been written well, I don't think a lot of people would really go into the background as to how the writing of the film actually came about. And that's why we talk about Castaway today, because what the writer did for this film was well and truly above and beyond the Call of Duty. You don't normally get to see a writer's perspective on a new movie like this, where they start from square one and how they get from there to the writing of a multi-million dollar blockbuster movie. But I'm going to lift the lid a little bit today and tell you how the writer for this film did just that. Of course, a lot of hard work goes into the inspiration behind writing of a new movie, but I don't think anybody goes quite as far as Bill Broyles does, for reasons I will be explaining. He inspires confidence in people, which is the basic trait of a successful screenwriter. Even more than writing, Bill is the kind of person, you know, when you hear him say, this movie is going to work, you just trust him. He melts all the fear away. After finishing the screenplay for Apollo 13, another incredibly successful film, Broyles was brought on board to start the writing of the new 2000 film Castaway, the story of which is a FedEx engineer who manages to get washed ashore on a deserted island. And funnily enough, what's really weird about re-watching this movie is every time I see Tom Hanks and I just close my eyes, all I can think of is Woody, and that's all I can imagine. I mean, it just goes to show the, the reach and extent that Tom Hanks has and how good of an actor he actually is. Bill Broyles was integral to the success of Apollo 13, and for his writing in Castaway, this would truly cement himself in the A-list of Hollywood screenwriters, and for reasons I'm about to explain. You see, the philosophy that Bill Broyles had when he started writing the characters for these movies was he would try and transport himself into the shoes of those characters, so he had the best perspective possible in order to write the character well. Now, with Apollo 13, this might have been a little bit more difficult because he probably didn't have a spacecraft to hand, but with a film like Castaway, it's certainly more within the realms of possibility that you could actually put yourself in that position where you were cast away on a desert island. You have to ground things in an honestly felt experience of your own. Sometimes that is an experience that you've had yourself, other times you have to talk to people and try to get into their heads and try to experience what they did. So what he did was he packed his bags, went to a deserted island and casted himself out from society for a period of time in order to get into the mind of somebody who was actually stranded on a deserted island. Yes, uh, he actually did this. In 1999, Broyles called upon the help of some Mormon survivalists in Utah and asked them to take him out on a boat to the Sea of Cortez in Mexico. And there they found a deserted island, dropped him off, and they were then on their way. And he was left on the island all by himself. I mean, before they left, they did teach him how to make a fire, but aside from that, they gave him no food, no tools, no shelter, nothing really, they just left him to his own devices and let him stay on the island for about 10 days before coming back and collecting him. Now, over those 10 days, as you might imagine, he would have first-hand experience what it would be like to be cast away and to really use your own intuition to survive. And that's just what he did. And whilst he was on the island, everything he did would basically translate into what happens in the film and what he did to survive, such as the cracking open of coconuts and the hunting of the wildlife. So really a first-hand experience. Royals' time on the island would really form a structure as to how the majority of the film would go. However, one thing happened which really is quite a key part of the film and partly why it's so popular today, and that is how Wilson, the volleyball, is introduced. 
The inspiration for this allegedly was one morning when Boyles was walking along the beach, a volleyball had washed up, and it just so happened to be the Wilson brand of volleyball, which is the same one that's used in the film, and is the same thing that happens when Tom Hanks' character finds and creates Wilson. I had to learn to make a spear out of a rock, and I had to spear a fish or a stingray and actually eat it raw. I had to lick water off leaves. Everything he does in the movie, I did. I went down to the beach the next morning and there was a volleyball washed up on the shore. It was a Wilson. I put some shells and some seaweed on it and talked to it. That became like the core of the movie. Broyles has actually gone on record and said that his favourite character in the film is Wilson, which is strange because he has no lines and he's a volleyball. But this really just goes to show how good the writing is because watching a movie of one guy talking to a volleyball for half of it and there being an emotional connection there really resonated with the audience and it just goes to show that with good writing you can make anything interesting. What I just said then wasn't entirely true because the way that Broyles wrote the script for the movie was that he actually did give lines to Wilson. However, obviously they weren't said in the film. The way that they were used was to try and convey to Tom Hanks how the volleyball would be speaking to him if he wasn't going crazy and he was an actual person he was talking to. And just giving all those little cues here and there would really help inform the actor as to how best to interact with a volleyball. Yes, that does sound very weird for me to say, but it, it seemed like it worked, so gotta give credit to him. Here's a man whose emotional connections have not been as deep or as simple and honest as they could have been. And he is learning to communicate and to form this deep attachment, not to another human being, but to a volleyball. In a way, to his own projection. Who would have known that this was the reason that a fully grown man almost weeped seeing this film when Wilson was floating away in the sea near the end? And no, that's not the only time I've ever wept at a film with Tom Hanks in it. Cue Toy Story 3 you heartless b****s. Like I said, all these moments and experiences that Broyles had on the island fed directly into the film and the writing of the characters. And one of the big things that he struggled with with his time on the island was the isolation and loneliness. And honestly, that would be far easier to write if you've actually experienced it firsthand and you know what you're talking about when you're in that situation. I mean, I know that he's only there for 10 days, not years on end, but Still, it's, you know, it's better than not doing it. That's when I realized it wasn't just a physical challenge. It was going to be an emotional, spiritual one as well. One important creative decision behind the making of the film was that they wanted to convince audiences that when Chuck Nolan eventually reached the island, he was completely alone and there was nobody else there with him. The way they achieved this was that there was absolutely no cutbacks to civilization. There was no voiceovers, no music, and really it would just focus on the singular experience of Chuck Nolan in the moment. Which is one of those things that perhaps you just take for granted until somebody like myself points it out and tells you that's how they did it, which is pretty nifty. In order to further this belief even further, they decided to delay the filming of the island scenes an entire year after everything else. And that was to allow Tom Hanks to lose a lot of weight and get down to a state where it was truly believable that he'd been on that island for that long. And simply doing that would hopefully try and portray to audiences the sheer length of time that he's been there for. No McDonald's or Taco Bell, I'm afraid. It's straight coconuts from here. It's just little things like that which really help try and reinforce this whole theme that they're trying to give and to try and show that this is really what would happen if you were left alone on an island for that long. Royals did say that the better of an actor you have, the less lines they need to still be a convincing character. And thankfully, they had Tom Hanks there, who really, really carried the film a lot. Royals was only on the island for 10 days, and not the multiple years that he's in in the film, which means that he can only give a limited scope of experience to put into the film, which does certainly then raise a lot of questions and leaves a few gaps in the actual making of the film. Such as, how did he get there? How was he after a few years of being there? And how did he get off the island? These are all things which they grappled with for some time to try and determine how the film would go and the conclusion of it in the end. 
Many ideas were considered, such as the fact that he was rescued by Japanese fishermen, he'd become complacent on the island, or other things like that, but they were all rejected on the basis that they just weren't interesting. After such a harrowing experience like this, you'd really want to see some sort of character development and some different conclusion for our character, which really would be wasted if any of those other things were to occur. Which, of course, we know the actual ending was there with the crossroads and no land. Chuck Noland. No land. No land. That's why his name's No Land. Ah. Oh. Was it just me that didn't get that? And yes, symbolism was another thing that Broyles used to great effect. There are certainly a lot of things jam-packed into this movie which are there for intended effect. One of the most recognisable symbols in the entire movie is the gold wings that are on the FedEx box which Chuck carries with him as he goes. And that was actually thought of by the wife of Broyles, and she said the following in a blog post. When I first met my husband, William Broyles, I gave him a monoprint, a pair of wings encircled by three rings. To me, this image symbolised our relationship. The two wings representing the two beings and the three rings signifying mind, body and spirit. He was just starting to write the script for the movie Castaway with Tom Hanks, and my monoprint inspired him to write an artist character into the movie. Before the movie was filmed, the director, Robert Zemeckis, reviewed the work of many other artists but was not satisfied. I decided to submit my artwork, I painted many FedEx boxes before and came up with an image that the director thought would work on screen. The wings became the key image on the FedEx box that inspired the Tom Hanks character. He kept that box intact throughout his ordeal. And it's little things like that which to the untrained eye you may not realise or may not give too much attention to, but the intention for the writers for what they've put in there really meant a lot and there is a whole bunch of this stuff in the film so if you're interested there's plenty of it online but I just thought I'd highlight some of the key ones here. So yeah, if you're ever going to be writing something, one good thing to do if you're going to take a leaf out of Boyles' book is to try and experience it yourself. So. Let's just hope and pray that you're writing something which is probably safe because the next time you need to write the sequel for Alien vs Predator for example, you're going to be hard pressed to actually have a good time doing that. If you like the video be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to be notified as soon as I upload my next video be sure to hit the bell button. And if you've got any ideas as to what videos you'd like me to discuss next, let me know down in the comments below. As always, sources used in the video will be in the description. Right, I'm going to go lock myself away in my room and start editing this video because as any YouTuber knows, that is exactly what it's like to be cast away. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.